Enhance your experience by becoming a supporting member. Gain access to unseen videos and video requests. Three day free trial by visiting zionmembership.com. Chosen ones, empaths, this video might not be for everyone, but I do feel that there is a percentage or a small part of the audience that may benefit from this video. So if it's not for you, um, maybe something else you can find on the channel will be for you. But for those of you that uh, kind of want the narcissist back or desire the narcissist back. And um, one thing I will just put out there straight away is these feelings will submerge. If you bear patience, if you start analysing the situation correctly, um, realising you deserve more, these feelings will submerge. So you, you won't forever be bound um, or caught in this bind, so to speak, um, of desiring the narcissist back. But um, with that being said, um, the reason that I'm touching on this is because I see frequent comments, right, from survivors of narcissistic abuse with a narcissist involved in their life, and they're very passionately saying um, the narcissist has no feelings, the narcissist doesn't want you back, this information is false, things of that nature, right? Now, I've kind of had an epiphany or inspiration from seeing those comments um, quite frequently, that the reason you're thinking that is actually because you desire the narcissist. Now, I'm, it's a theory, I may be wrong. You know, for those of you who think I'm wrong, um, you can put it in the comment section. I'll get back to it when I can. But um, I think that the reason you're you're feeling these feelings of thinking that the narcissist doesn't want you back, um, you're taking things on surface level, first of all, right? You're not looking beneath the veil, but I've touched on that many times. But what I think it surrounds is actually because of the fact that you still desire the narcissist back and you want to see something like crystal clear or validation, or something really apparent that signifies to you that the narcissist is still involved in your life. Whereas other victims of narcissistic abuse that um, from the narcissist involved in their life that are resonating with the message that I'm sharing, they're picking up on subtle cues, you know? They're picking up on the subtle cues that the narcissist leaves, you see? The, 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 the narcissist involved in your life will leave hints, Right? It could be something like, let me think, um, it could be something as as small as a message on social media, right? It could be, you know, they could be glorifying, they're with their new supply, happily ever after, and you get a simple message on social media, or you get a text, or you get something, right? Um, a lot of people actually understand on, uh, and are aware now that even when you think the narcissist isn't watching you, they are, right? Whether that's in the physical form of stalking or alternatively like the digital form of stalking, they do watch for a very long period of time, like you're a prey. Um, they do analyse your movements. They do analyse what you're doing. They, 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 they think they own you. And if you really grasp the concept of how this species um, thinks towards their victim, right? Um, they do kind of feel like they own you, right? So if you can try and understand that you're dealing with someone that thinks they own you, so even if they've hurt you in the worst possible way, and I'm not condoning anything they've done to you, right? Um, even if they've gone off with new supplies and they're glorifying their new supply and you're still unable to see beneath the veil that they've downgraded or they're not happy in their current situation, you're still not able to see that um, just yet. You will do in time, God willing, hopefully, um, or if the universe wills, um, you will see in, in, in the due course. But um, you've you've got to understand that this this ownership that or possessive nature that the narcissist has, um, this stems from them actually wanting to rekindle, but they don't know how to rekindle. So you have to absorb that. So for those of you that say the narcissist has no feelings, 
The narcissist doesn't care. They have self-absorbed feelings. It's all about how they're feeling and how this situation has caused them challenges and, and, and problems in their own life. That's what it's about, you know. Their regret, their self-absorbed regret or desire wanting you back is very self-absorbed. And it's all about how it makes them feel in the current moment, right? It's all about how it makes them feel. It's not about you. It's not about you being... Um, it's about you being beneficial to their lives, yes. But it's not about your feelings, right? So that's why there's a there's a confusion in thinking the narcissist doesn't have feelings. They have a lot of feelings going on in their mind, heart and soul. Um, weird feelings, deranged feelings, possessive feelings, um, really irrational beliefs, um, things of that nature. They do have that. And if you try and absorb that, right, you could have not spoken to this narcissist in a long time. Right? You could have not spoken to them in a long time. But some of you are putting in the comment section, and I'm not criticizing any of you. I'm not criticizing no one. Like, please don't take it like that. But some people are saying, it's been six months. I haven't heard from the narcissist. And you're kind of governing your whole viewpoint based on the fact that the narcissist hasn't contacted you for six months. When you're not flipping it around and seeing that the narcissist is punishing you for not speaking for those six months. And it's up to you to go through those six months of not speaking to the narcissist involved in your life and actually try and heal and get to a place where you don't want them to speak to you, you know? Because it's easy to say no contact, you you need to go no contact, and no contact is great and stuff like that. But for, for those of you that still kind of desire or want the narcissist back in your life, it's only through these periods of silence, this, this, these periods of no communication between yourselves, where you're actually going to be raised degrees and ascend and evolve, right? So what I don't want you to do, I really don't want you to do is spend, it's going to happen regardless of, but this video might um, push you in the right direction. Um, through the time when you're not communicating, the very hurtful times, the times when you maybe just want a hoover or you want some validation, you've got to realise it's during these times that you're getting yourself back again. If, for example, things worked out the way you planned them and you could just speak to the narcissist willy-nilly nilly, and they would, they would start engaging with you again, it's not beneficial for you. There's something out there, call it God, call it the universe, call it karma. There's something out of you looking after you as a chosen one, an empath. And God or the universe does not want this narcissist communicating with you, right? That's why God or the universe or karma or whatnot, whatever you want to call it, whatever your belief system is, makes it so difficult for the narcissist to actually build a bridge back towards you, right? But they are going to make some attempt at one point in time i can't say if it's going to be in six months i can't say if it's going to be in a year i can't say if it's going to be in two years and onwards right if you read the comment section carefully you will see victims of narcissistic abuse experiencing hoovers after decades right you know this is the point do not wait for a hoover you need to get to a place and enjoy um, being away from the narcissist you need to really reach the point of indifference where you no longer desire the narcissist this is this should be your priority or you no longer desire the narcissist where you no longer care what they're doing and a lot of you um, I find I don't know for factual but I, I have a rough idea that many of you are still engaging in looking on their social media so they're actually hurting you. Um, they're able to hurt you from a distance. And it's not just social media. I've done sessions with people where people are viewing other types of... Um, how can I put it? Where they're viewing um, 
the paper trail of what the narcissist is doing. That's all I can say. They're viewing the paper trail of what the narcissist is doing within their current lives. And they know that the narcissist is with a new supply and they're following the paper trail of what the narcissist is doing with their expenses and things like that and what they're, you know, what they're doing, right? Um, this is a very negative thing to do, you know? Following the narcissist, um, spying on the narcissist, it's all low vibration. I'm not criticizing you, but it's low vibrational. This is keeping you bound, right? First of all, you need to make sure that you stop looking on their social media. What comes with that, through the grace of God, through the universe, through time, um, you will learn how to deal with the being alone, being away from them. Now, a lot of victims of narcissistic abuse fall into the entrapment of they don't go through the season of isolation. It's just a season. That's all it is. It's just a season. Life's not over. Like, if you really believe that because a narcissist is no longer in your life anymore, it's game over. That if you, you the thought might cross your mind, and there's nothing wrong with you for thinking that. But these can be intrusive thoughts. They can be uh, thoughts from, from negative energy. They can be... Um, Remnants of the low self-esteem that the narcissist is inflicted on you. Anything like that. It's not all over. Life's not all over because the narcissist discarded you, reverse discarded you, or you cut them off because they become too toxic. Life's not over. And like I always say, if this is not a romantic relationship, this is a friend or a family member or a colleague or an associate or a boss or whoever, life's not over because this narcissist is no longer engaging with you. Right or not engaging with you the way that that you want them to engage with you. Life's not over. You just have to bear patience. Now that might sound like the most annoying thing that you've heard in this video. Cliche. You're saying like you'll be saying Zion. Um, it's been a number of years. Um, uh, you're still hurting. Uh, things like this. Like just bear patience. If you can break the cycle of pain that you feel. Right, you are spiritually connected to these other individuals. Right, in the spiritual realm, you are connected, they can pick up on hints, cues. Um, that you're 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 kind of navigating yourself to a better place, right? And I'm not telling you to navigate yourself to a better place in your heart, mind, and soul for the narcissist to reach out of a hoover, but that will come with it if you sincerely go to a better place, you find some purpose to your life, you find some meaning to your existence other than people, right? People is not the everything that, like, of whatever type of relationship this is, people is not the, the, the be-all, end-all, you know? There's so much um, stigma around people being single, not being in a romantic relationship. There's so much stigma around people not having friends. There's so much stigma around, you know... Um, People not people being loners or people being um, what else are they called hermits or things like this. This is all negative language that's put onto um, the human race. Whereas if you look at God's chosen people from the past throughout the centuries, whether you take it as mythology, whether you take it as law. Whatever you, you take it as, I'm not trying to insult anyone's religions or belief systems, you know, this is a an open channel. I'm trying to say you can extract wisdom that many of God's chosen people from centuries ago um, were actually, for a season of their life, they spent it alone, right? Whether they were getting revelations or things like this, um, whatever was happening during those times, they spent this these periods of time alone. So this is what you've got to try to understand that sometimes you may try your utmost to engage with people that are paying you no respect, that, that want nothing to do with you. Um, you, you, you might potentially start engaging in a new, ro new romantic relationship and then the person will want nothing to do with you. And that's okay. That's what you've got to know. When someone doesn't want to engage with you 
or someone doesn't want to communicate with you in the way that you think you deserve, that's okay. Let them go, you know? Do not, after the experience that you've had from this narcissist involved in your life, do not put all of your, um, I don't know how to say it, like, don't put so much importance on finding someone new, a new friend, a new romantic partner, a new, new whatever, like, don't, new colleague, new associate, don't, don't, don't prioritise putting so much importance on doing that so suddenly, you know, you need to heal, you need space, you need time to reflect, you need time to heal those wounds, and I promise you, if you, if you actually heal the wounds to the best of your ability, to the best of your comprehension, you know, scars will remain, but if you can do it to the best of your ability, you know, really try, be kind to yourself, you know, you have to reinforce that message on a daily basis to be kind to yourself, your empaths and chosen ones are so kind to other people, they, they, they forget to be kind to themselves, right, if you can really be kind to yourself and try and break from this spell of desiring the narcissist back, You've got to understand, once you reach the point that you are at indifference, you do not want them back. You do not want to engage with them. You win. This is the game. You need to get to this point. You have to get to this point, right? You being negative and saying, the narcissist has no feelings. The narcissist doesn't suffer from dumpers remorse. The narcissist is not. Like, it's easy for you to say that. But if you look beneath the veil and you really look beneath the veil, you'll see that you're dealing with someone who is obsessed with causing you pain. It may have converted from the love bomb that you were used to. And love bombs don't just occur in romantic relationships. It can occur in friendships and other types of relationships as well. It's this, this, there may be a conversion of uh, the way they're treating you, right? So you were used to the positive kind of love bomb. And it's converted now to pain. But this is all the same for the narcissist. In fact, it's even more potent for them to cause devastation and pain. So you need to understand that if they know you're in a position of hurt, they know you desire them back, they're going to leave you that way. It's only when they discover that you don't give a shit, excuse my language, you don't care about them no more. That's when you're going to see them start popping up like whack-a-mole. And it's at that point you need to start hitting that hammer down, you know, and eradicating them, getting them out of your life, door slam, bolt and world it shut. You know whack a mole, that thing where the where the thing where the thing pops up in the in the machine. You know that game in the fun fairs? That 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 little whack a mole thing, the, the the little mole pops up and you have to hit it with the hammer. This is what they're like. They will pop up again. They will at some point in time, at the most inconvenient time. You know, you, you, you know, this may see like a distant, distant dream for you, but you could be at a place, um, you know, say this is a romantic relationship. You could be in a new romantic relationship, a healthy romantic relationship. Someone has reciprocity. Someone has reciprocation. Um, you could be moving on with your life. Um, you might not be glorifying it on social media. You might be keeping it to yourself, but the narcissist catches wind of this somehow and they'll pop up. They'll pop up. This could be you going on a trip with your friends and you're starting to live life again and you're, you're, you're feeling great in yourself. The narcissist that is involved in your life is going to pop up, right? This is what's going to happen. They, they feel your energy. They feel when you disconnect, right? Do not stay plugged in to these parasites, right? They, they, they want to stay, they want you to stay plugged into them. Right, that's what they ultimately want. They want you to stay plugged into them. So you need to disconnect and try every day. If you desire for the narcissist that was involved in your life back, try every day to counteract that. If you draw a pros and cons list, um, I've heard of victims of narcissistic abuse doing this. You will see that there's so many more benefits to not being involved with them. To actually what they brought to the table. They don't bring anything to the table. So. 
If you'd like to know more about how empaths feel others deeply and saying no is okay, please click this video here. So anyway, I'll be back with another video soon. Peace.